Welcome. My name is Jose Crespanadon, and I'm here to present the status of the short baseline near detector at Fermilab. Let me first motivate this experiment by telling you about two previous experiments, LCD and Minibun, that both produced anomalies. LCD used antineutrinos from a positive mion decay addressed source. It was a liquid scintillator detector that used the inverse beta decay reaction to detect the electron antineutrinos and it observed a 3.8 sigma excess. As you can see here in the plot, the black data points representing the experimental data and the expectation, which corresponds to the sum of the red and the green histograms. You can see that in order to fit the data, it's necessary to add an additional contribution shown in blue, which represents the anomalous transition between mean antineutrinos and electron antineutrinos. Minibun instead used and neutrinos and antineutrinos from mostly a pion decaying flight beam. It was a rank of detector that could not distinguish between electron and gamma. And they observed both excesses on the electron neutrino and electron antineutrino channels. Minibun had a different baseline and energy from L and D, but a similar L over E ratio. Here for the neutrino channel, you can see the black data points representing the experimental data and the solid histograms representing the expectation. And there is an excess which amounts to 4.8 sigma. The LSMD and Minimum anomalies, together with other short baseline anomalies, when interpreted as neutrino oscillations, point to a delta M squared region of about one electron volt squared. This cannot be explained with the three standard model neutrinos and the minimal model three plus one requires an additional heavier neutrino mass eigenstate, which is mostly stellar. However, there is a strong tension between appearance and disappearance experiments, as shown in the plot. The appearance region, shown in red, is in conflict with the disappearance limit, shown as a blue line. Going to more complicated models, such as 3 plus 2 or 3 plus 3, 3 do not improve this tension. In fact, New mechanisms not relying exclusively on neutrino oscillation have been proposed in order to explain those anomalies. Here's where it enters the short baseline neutrino program at Fermilab. The short baseline neutrino program at Fermilab uses a neutrino beam, which is mostly from pion decay in flight, even though it has also k and mion decay components. It's a well-known beam, the booster neutrino beam, which is the same as Minibun. Then we have three liquid argon time prediction chamber detectors. By using the same detector technology and target, we reduce the systematic uncertainties. And in addition, the liquid argon DPC technology allows us to discriminate between electron and gamma in order to resolve the minimum anomaly. The first liquid argon DPC is SBMD at 110 meters away from the production tank target. It has 112 tons of liquid argon in the active volume and is expected to start taking neutrino data in 2023. Microbun, at 470 meters away from the neutrino production target, has 90 tons of active liquid argon and has been taking neutrino data since October 2015. Finally, we have Icarus, at 600 meters away from the production target, has 476 tons of active liquid argon and is expected to start taking neutrino data this year. The goals of SVND are four. First, Performing a high precision measurement of the booster neutrino beam flux can be lifted with the neutrino argon cross section before any oscillation happens. The high correlation between the near and far detectors grants us a reduction on the systematic uncertainties that boosts the sensitivity for oscillations at the delta M squared region of about one electron volt squared in order to conclusively address the short baseline neutrino anomalies. The second goal is performing high precision measurements of cross sections of mean neutrinos and electron neutrinos and argon. This will improve our knowledge of neutrino nucleus interaction and reduce the systematic uncertainties on oscillation surges for both short and long baseline experiments, such as Dune. The third goal is using the neutrino beams at Fermilab to search for BM standard model physics. And the fourth goal is advancing for the liquid argon time projection chamber detector technology. In terms of oscillation physics, when studying new appearance, the role of SBND will be measuring the intrinsic electron neutrino component of the booster neutrino beam flux with larger statistics before any oscillation happens. Then Icarus and Microbun will search for an excess of electron neutrinos using SBND measurement as reference. As you can see in the plot, the SBN program will be able to explore the LSMD favor 
region shown as blue shade with five sigma. In addition to new E appearance, we can study new mu disappearance. And actually, if you have new E appearance, then you have to also have new mu disappearance because one of the matrix elements that is driving new E appearance is U mu 4, which is the matrix element which is responsible of new mu disappearance. The role of SMIN here is measuring the anoxylated neutrino flux. And Icarus and microwave will search for a deficit of muon neutrinos, which is only possible thanks to the reduction on the flux normalization systematic uncertainty brought by SBNB. As you can see here in the plot, SBN will cover almost with five sigma the loud region shown in green. Then we have the cross-section program and SBND will have the largest statistics of neutrino argon interactions ever recorded. We will accumulate 5 million events of mu neutrino charge current inclusive interactions and about 1.6 million events of neutral current mu neutrino interactions. In addition, we will have about 12,000 electron neutrino events per year. But not only in inclusive mode, Thanks to the excellent particle identification capabilities of the liquid ion DPCs, we can also study with detail all the exclusive channels and distinguish between the multiple pion production channels. This will allow us to discriminate between nuclear models and Dune Monte Carlo generators, which is also useful for Dune. With these measurements of cross sections, we will be able to reduce the systematic, systematic uncertainties for oscillation analysis. In addition, the close location to the beam or in enables beyond standard model searches, such as, for example, dark neutrino portals shown here in this diagram. Here we have a muon neutrino, which is producing a dark neutrino that then decays into a dark boson, and then this dark boson decays into an electron positron pair. This is a possible explanation of the minimum excess that does not rely on oscillation. And you can see here the simulation of this band. In addition, we can also search for heavy neutral leptons, which can be behind the smallness of the neutrino mass. And we can also search for light like dark matter or many charged particles. In addition, the proximity to the beam origin also allows us the study of the flux of axis dependence. The mean neutrino flux and mean energy depend on, on the angle, while the electron neutrino distributions are approximately constant. You can see here the dependence on the angle of the mean neutrino flux, and here the distribution of energies when going to different of axis angles. This will allow us to have additional handles for background reduction, interaction model constraints, and the flux, flux, systematic, flux systematic uncertainty reduction. Now describing the detector, the TPC has 112 tons of active liquid argon and a drift field of 500 volts per centimeter. There is a cathode plane assembled in the middle of the TPC at minus 100, minus 100 kilovolts that splits the TPC into two drift volumes with a maximum drift length of two meters and a maximum drift time of 1.28 milliseconds. On both sides, we have anode plane assembled with three wire planes in order to reconstruct the 3D interaction. As usual for the liquid ion TPCs, we have two induction planes with wires at 60 degrees from the vertical, and one collection plane with vertical wires. The wire pitch is three millimeters, and this amounts to more than 11,000 channels. In addition, we have also a UV calibration, laser calibration system to calibrate the TPC. The status of the TPC assembly, you can see here in the, in the pictures, we have the first anode plane assembled, coupled and aligned at Fermilab, and ready for installation in September. This structure you can see here corresponds to this structure in this diagram. We also have the cathode plane assembly recently installed. You can see here the picture which corresponds to this structure in the picture. And we also had the bottom field cage just installed. Regarding the SBND photon detection system, it's composed by 128 inch cryogenic PMTs which are mounted behind the wire plant. We have 96 which have TPV coating in order to detect the scintillation ultraviolet light. And we have 24 which has, which do not have TPV coating in order to detect only visible light. The readout electronics are KN-Flex ADC, which are digitizing at 500 megahertz. We also have 
192 exarapocas, which are light traps that use a dichroic filter and a wavelet while wavelength shifters in order to trap the photons. Half of them are only sensitive to visible light. We also have wavelength shifter reflector foils on the cathode plane assembly in order to improve the light detection of uniformity across the drift coordinate. And by this, SDND is testing technologies of interest for June. Regarding the assembly status of the SDND PTS, we have the PMTs delivered to Fermilab and they have passed the reception test. This Exarapoca production is being finalized in Brazil. We have 90% of it completed and being shipped to Fermilab and the silicon PM board quality assurance tests are ongoing at Fermilab. We also, we are also preparing the light calibration system installation. Regarding the SBND cryostat, you can see here a picture of the warm outer vessel, which is already installed in the building. And the cryostat inner membrane will begin this month. The, we have also in progress the cryogenics installation. And then we have the top of the cryostat, which has been fabricated at, at CERN and is ready to be shipped. We also have a cosmic ray dagger, which is formed by plastic scintillator strips arranged in planes with two layers for XY consonants, and which gives us a 94% per coverage of the cosmic ray flux. You can see here the panels in green. We also have the TPC cold electronics, at Fermilab, they have passed the reception test and they are ready to be installed. And we have the TPC backend electronics installed since 2020. The PDS readout electronics and the DAQ server are currently being installed. So in conclusion, SBND is the near detector of the shared baseline neutrino program at Fermilab that will use the booster neutrino beam to conclusively address the anomalies potentially caused by star neutrinos in the region of about one electron volt squared. SBND will measure the neutrino beam with high statistics before oscillation develops. Um, by doing so, will reduce the systematic uncertainties for the oscillation analysis. In addition, SBND will accumulate an unprecedented number of neutrino argon interactions, enabling a high precision cross-section program, which is useful for both, which is useful for both SBN and Dune. And in addition, because of the close location, SBND will search for beyond standard model physics. Currently, SBND is being installed and will be ready for cold commissioning by the end of 2022. And in name of Desmond Collaboration, thank you for your attention.